But Gerald Salenti joins me for a few minutes here. Wish we had more time. He's the publisher of the Trends Journal, and he joins me right now. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I know you got to go, and I've got uh, only a few minutes here, but let's get to cover what we can. What intrigued me about one of your latest email blasts was what John Conley told Gerald Salenti before he died about JFK's assassination and America's future, and I'm just kind of curious as to what he told you. Well, what he told me is we were coming back from the Anatole, we were going back into the Anatole Hotel after meeting with him on October 25th, 1992, and he said to me that if American people knew what was going on in this country, there'd be a revolution. And this is a guy, you know, that was the um, uh, governor of Texas, a Democrat, and the Treasury Secretary, a Republican under Nixon. Hmm. And he was pretty disgusted about what was going on in the nation. And he said if the corruption was so bad and things were so out of line, this is back then, that there'd be a revolution. Now, 20 years later, boy, it looks like he was right. Uh, it's worse than ever. I, one of the questions I had for you, I've, I've watched some of your stuff on YouTube and stuff, and I had you on years ago. I haven't been able to connect with you in years. But uh, when's the last time you think we had an actual real president of the United States? Was that Kennedy? I would say uh, Eisenhower. Eisenhower. He a, yeah, wow. he was a real man. You know, this guy's a five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces. And there was no wars on Eisenhower. He wasn't like these chicken walks that sent other people to go die for them. Mm -hmm. Well, they never fought a day in his life. And he was a man of peace. He really was. And he was about the military-industrial complex taking over the nation. Right. Now, it's not only the military-industrial complex, it's the cyber-industrial complex. It's the militarization of the police forces riding around with these vehicles that from the Iraq War. You know, there's pig patrols everywhere. There's no freedom. So this is what he was talking about. It's the merger of state and corporate powers. <coughs> Excuse me, it's the banking takeover. Yeah, what's is really interesting is I don't know how Democrats get a pass on this, because certainly you can call Republicans chicken hawks if you want, and we can uh, argue about all of that till the cows come home. But bottom line is, uh, whether it's been Bush in charge or Bush the— Look, my first warning sign was when George Bush the first talked about a new world order, and I'm like, What? New World Order, I'm not for that. But that was my first big red flag years ago. It was probably the first time I became cons uh, concerned. But I, the, but I look at whether we've had him or his son or Clinton or Obama in charge. Nothing really changes. It just gets getting progressively worse. You're right, because it's a mob. I like to call them Democrat Republicans. How about Bloods in the Crips? I mean, they're murderers <laughs> and they're thieves. <laughs> No, I'm serious. They send you to war to get your brains blown out, limbs blown off, and, and or, or dead, or mind blown. For what? For what? For fake war? They rob your money. The banks are robbing us. We're paying for their, we pay for their bailouts. They're criminals. And nobody wants to, I like my Democrat. I like my Republican. They're like little kids. I know. Everybody, looking up to these politicians. I know. Everybody thinks it is Republicans versus Democrats and where everybody's too lined up for their side. When, in fact, it's not Republicans versus Democrats. It's us versus them. You got it. And they are winning because the people are complacent and they believe in this fairy tale about democracy. This isn't it. No. A, look, you have a gang of 535. That's how many senators and congressmen are running the show. No, and but, they call the money they get uh, adults like Red Bull, Bronx and Yonkers. We call them bribes and payoffs. Oh, no, they're campaign contributions. You know, save it. The country is what Connolly has told me. If the people knew what was going on, there'd be a revolution. And now the people do know what's going on. And there is Will no... Will there be a revolution? Yeah, man, I don't know. Oh, man, I don't know. Who does he think killed JFK? Did he ever say anything to you about that? No, he just... They kept saying they have three... They heard three shots. They heard three shots, and that was it. He stuck by the three-shot thing. Yep, yep. And he does he think they came from behind or the front? He said the first shot he heard, he turned to his right. He said, I know it was a gunshot because I've been hunting since I'm a little boy. And he said, then I, uh, I looked over to my left, and there were brains on my shoulders. Oh. I know they were brains because my dad was a butcher. And then he said he felt like a pounding on his back, and that's when the bullet went through his back. 
through his chest, through his hand, and out through his knee. <sighs> wow. Wow, but he doesn't, does, he doesn't, I can't imagine he believes in, and, and I don't necessarily think that Oswald wasn't involved, but I don't believe the single bullet theory, and I don't believe it was just Oswald acting alone. Do you? No, I don't know. You know, look, read my lips, no new taxes. Yeah. I didn't have sex with that woman, Lewinsky. I smoked, but I didn't inhale. Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction ties to al-Qaeda. Why would I believe one thing they say? Yeah, I know. And we're sitting here and it's lie after lie after lie, no matter who is in office and no matter who's in office, nothing changes. Nothing changes. Everybody thinks they, it's changing. Are we we're supposed to be off out of Afghanistan? Now, supposedly we're going to be. Um, no, we're get, not. We're going to well, be there in 2024. And then we're supposed to be out of uh, Gitmo or supposed to have closed Gitmo. That's not closed. I mean, wh- whether you agree with these things or not, folks, the point is nothing changes no matter who is in charge. And no, why? when are we going to wake up and get that? No matter who. Wh- what's your? Give me a prediction for the future because you've been really good at you. You, you said, um, I guess it was, oh, I'm going to guess back in May, even before the primaries of last year, that you said Obama was our next president. You had already predicted that uh, way before the election. I don't remember when. Give me some prognostications for the next year or so. What do you see coming? Well, March is the month to watch out for economically because they're going to have to start tapering. And when they do, interest rates are going to go up and this false economy is going to really crash the bond market will explode. So that's the, that's the time to look at. And by the way, uh, I, when one positive for Obama, and I'm a political atheist, as you can tell. I don't believe in any of this stuff. Uh, it, great news with Iran. You know, if, if the Japanese and the Germans could have, and the Vietnamese could have been our mortal enemies, you know, we didn't have a war with Iran. It's time for peace. And it'll be good for the economy, by the way. Because there'll be a lot more oil into the marketplace, and it'll bring down oil prices. And the less money that goes into the gas tank, that's good for the retail sales. More goes into the consumer. So, but the but the Israelis, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, and the lobby in the United States are trying to stop this peace process. And all you have to do is look at the headlines. This thing did not make the, the big splash headlines. They're really downplaying it. So I think they're going to do everything they can to scuttle the agreement. No, but I'm but, all for peace. Yeah, but but, but, but my, my concern is that we I don't know that we've really solved the problem about them having the ability, the nuclear capability. I, uh, you know, I've been hearing that every day. Pakistan, India, North Korea, Israel has 400 alleged nuclear warheads. This is propaganda stuff, as I see it. Where they're going to send off a nuclear weapon to somebody, and they'll get there, and they'll be they'll be glass in six seconds. In 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 Iran, you say? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they'll retaliate. They're really gonna, Iran hasn't attacked anybody anywhere in my lifetime or the lifetime before. You look at the United States. We're in Afghanistan. Except, uh, we're in Iraq. What about I mean, what? Come it, on. Okay, the okay. They want to go All right. Okay. But, but what about killing their own people by the thousands? Hey, look, that's none of my business. They won't kill their own people. I mean, look around the world. Look at the founding fathers of this country. Stay out of foreign entanglements. Anybody that wants to go fight somebody else. Pack up your gear and go. Leave me out of their psycho trip. It's one losing war after another. Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan. How many more do you have to add up? Got uh, Gerald Salenti again. He is, again, the author of the... Well, I got a terrible connection. I got to run here, and you got to run. It's 9 o'clock, sir. Thank you. The Trans Journal, and you can find out more about it. Just Google the Trans Journal and read his predictions. Gerald Salenti, spelled C-E-L-E-N-T. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir.